Okay, we're making a vertical cut. And uh, I've started the cut. And I've, I've uh, got the camera so you can probably see. We're just taking a, we're just learning here. So we're trying to take a very small cut. And I don't know, let me turn this around, see if, make sure I'm not, my arm's not in the way. Is I gotta turn the vertical feed, so. There we go. Um, I think I'm clear. I think, um, after I finish this cut, we'll, uh, I'll take a couple shots, still shots, and show you what I had to do to kind of rig this up. Um, I noticed that the vertical, have some problem with vertical height uh, to begin with, so I tried a bunch of different vices in here. This one seems to work best, so I'm using this one. The tool bits extended enough that it goes through this little block of steel. Um, so I got to work out something else for something that's deeper. So this thing's only probably about three quarters of an inch deep or so. So anyway, that's what we're doing. I'm not the down feed. I'm two or three thousandths per stroke. Um, the end, I'm not sure it's square. It was an unsquare cut last time. So, because what I had to do is put a screw jack in one side of the vise. So, my material wasn't, wasn't sitting right in there. So that's what I, I kind of fixed that. Finally got a tool bit that works here. Took some pulling around to try to grind up a tool bit that would cut effectively. This seems to work, but uh, I'm sure it's not as good as it can be. That's for sure. What I need is an automatic down feed. <laughs> Not much action on the clapper because we're not going in very deep. 10 or 15 thousandths is the width of the cut, so it tends to grab if I get the cut too wide. It was probably something to do with the tool bit grind. I'm standing on the opposite side of the cut, so I can't see where I'm at. I think I must be getting close to the bottom, though. Okay, I think I'm there. I don't hear any cutting action. So I think we're we're through. Seems like it did alright. So let's see here. Maybe instead of taking skill still shots, maybe I'll try to move the camera. 
Um, or maybe I'll just zoom out. Okay, what I had to do was, um, uh, let me move the camera over a little bit. One thing I had to do, I don't know if it's really necessary, but I thought it was a good idea, is uh, I need to lock the carriage. So I don't have a carriage lock yet, but eventually if, I have to disassemble the shaper to, to put that in. But um, I have a, a toolmaker's clamp um, right here at the end of the carriage. So that's holding the carriage so it can't move. Uh, eventually that's where I'll put a lock right there so that's a simple job once I take the carriage off but I have to disassemble the the unit in order to do that the other thing is is um, what I had to do with this vise and you can't see it but I'm gonna loosen the vise up so you can is all I did I needed to put a um, a uh, a little screw jack on this side over here in order to get this piece to clamp up right in the vise so um, that's that's another thing that that was making the cut incorrect so let me um, I'll just take I'm not going to make any more cuts on this so let me just take this out if I find a wrench here I'll just take this piece out and um, so all I did was take a t-nut and um, put a little piece of rod in there and adjust it so that's <laughs> that was a simple project just to something just cut off a piece of rod that's a little short piece of rod and put one of my t-nuts in there so that took care of that um, so that's you know, I'd made a previous cut on this, and that's why the end was was kind of out of square. So um, I'm going to check it with a square now and see if it's any better. And yes, it is. According according to the square, we've 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 got it uh, square now. May not be perfect, but according to the machine, it's square. It's pretty pretty close. Uh, the other way, I can't check it. But I already checked it vertically and before, and it was good. Uh, this side got a burr on it, so. But yeah, it, it it looks pretty good. There's a burr over here, so I need to take that off. But that that works pretty good. I finally I fooled around with it quite a bit to try to get something that would make a nice cut, and that seems to work. Um, let me let me take the uh, tool bit out of here. I'm sure a lot of people out here know out there know how to grind these tool bits. I don't. So, so all I did was um, I got a. I don't know if you can see it, but um, I got a radius ground in the face of it. And um, I got quite a bit of relief on it. Hard for me to tell what it looks like in the camera, so I'm trying to show you the end of it, kind of. Anyway, um, that seems to work, you know. So I'm going to go with that right now. Try to improve on that a little bit, but uh, seems to be okay. So that's that. That's just a short video. I just wanted to show you that that's what I've been working on, and um, I got a bunch of I I I've been I've been busy with work, so um, I haven't had a lot of time to come out into the shop. Um, I have been working on some other small projects, but um, uh, they're just little couple hour projects. I made a. Uh, <clears throat> I 
I made a hand wheel for the for the mill vise, and that that helps a lot. You know, I, let me see if I can put it out here. Just a simple hand wheel, just for some some crap I had laying around the shop, and I did order a. It looks like a 12 millimeter socket for that. And just I lock, I pressed it in there, but I it, it you know it, I lock, I ended up loctiting it in there. But that, it's a simple deal. So I made that in my hour or two playing around out here. And also I uh, I think I I uh, I ordered a uh, I made a hand crank for the for the mini lathe and. Um, if I zoom out a little bit you can see so that's just a simple project I think it took me about four or five hours or something and the handle um, I was uh, it's a water pump handle I <laughs> I, I spent six dollars uh, and ordered that from uh, Amazon so actually it, it worked out okay saved me making a handle but I could have made a handle too so this thing really if anybody doesn't have one of these things I suggest you make one uh, when you you know I did some threading recently and this thing really really came in handy I was really happy that I had it so I'll show you what I did I I made a mistake um, I had an old uh, let's see if I can get this out of here I had an old cast iron uh, I had an old cast iron um, uh, base plate for a wood lathe and I thought well you know it had an oddball thread in it I don't think I was going to try to sell it to somebody but I, instead of doing that I thought well I'll just put a, a arbor in it or a shank in it and I'll, I can chuck it up right so in case I ever need it which I probably never will because I have a regular base plate for the lathe but anyway, um, the point the point is, is I made this piece here to go in there, and and I I, I don't know I made a mistake um, like a sixteenth of an inch mistake um, when I figured the size of the the piece. So <laughs> I I just had to keep cutting the threads till. I, I went down another sixteenth of an inch. That's what I did, and actually worked out pretty good. So it turned out to be a nice fit in there. But it's kind of a hard way to do things. But anyway, um, but the hand crank was really nice to have. I mean, <laughs> that saved me. I just I just did that in just a few minutes. So it was much better than I had. I, I made some other things also here. I don't know what happened to them. I made a bunch of uh, I made a bunch of, of arbors from some old threaded rod that I had around here, and uh, to use for some different purposes, and that worked pretty good. So anyway, I've been doing some small things in the shop. So I'm back on the shaper now, and I've got to um, I've got some things to do. So I've got to get this. I got to get a uh, I got to get a lock put in here that's one thing I need to do and I in the past I um, in building the, this carriage up in front here I um, I had to put a shim in one side uh, and actually it wasn't quite thick enough so this doesn't operate as smoothly as I'd like so what I need to do is actually put a little thicker shim on one side so that's another thing I need to do and I realized today I, I got out the um, I got out the dial indicator to <laughs> to see how far I was moving the carriage, but I do need to take I have a little round piece over here on this side, and I need need to take that off and and put it on the uh, rotary table and and um, mark it out in five degree increments or something, so ten degree increments or something, so I can see how far I'm moving uh, moving the carriage, so. That's another little project that I have to do. So anyway, I just wanted to to show you and what's going on with the shaper and and um, so I got I got one more tool bit sort of figured out 
and um, so hopefully I'm going to keep working on tool bits. So anyway, I'll call off now. Just a short video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.